Unveiling Strong Delusion, Video 28, Milka, the Mother of Rebecca, Part 1. Last April, I told my viewers that I would have to take a month or two off in April of 28 for some legal obligations I had to others, and that two months turned into almost nine months, and I apologize to the viewers. And here we go with the new, the latest video, video 28. Milka, the unmentionable patriarch. Rabbis, priests, ministers, and biblical scholars avoid talking or writing about Milka, the mother of Rebecca. Rebecca bore Jacob and Esau. Without Milka, the entire lineage of Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel would not exist. Without Milka, much of the Torah could not have happened. Yet silence surrounds her story. Why? Milka, the scandalous patriarch. Rabbis, priests, ministers, and biblical scholars avoid speaking of, about Milka because of the unmentionable scandal that surrounds her and the birth of Rebekah, the wife of Isaac, the mother of Jacob and Esau. In a Bible filled with murderers, liars, polygamists, baby killers, and so much more, what scandal could engender such complete silence? We will see in this video. Milka, the Torah, Torah and History. To understand the Torah, history, and mythology, one must understand the story of Milka and of her ancestors. Milka connects the Torah to Greek and Egyptian mythology or history. Milka connects the family of Abraham to the dragon or serpent. Milka identifies Abraham as a Phoenician or Venetian. Milka the Queen. Milka or Milka means queen and much more. See, he, see Strong's Hebrew Concordance 4433, 4435, and 4436. Quote, of the 3335 with Aramaic or, or Dan, of Dan 510, appearance of Malka, all save two, songs six, eight through six, chapter, uh, verses eight through nine, refer to queens of foreign lands. End of quote. Haw Theological Word Book of the Old Testament, 1199b. Haw stands for the authors, Harris, Archer, and Wal Waltke. It can refer to the Queen of Heaven, Haw, 1199c. Meleket, see Jeremiah 718 and Strong C. Ru 4446. Melech, king. Melech means king in Hebrew. Strong C. Ru Concordance 4428-4430. Malku means royalty, kingdom, or reign. Strong's Hebrew Concordance 4437. Malak, angel. Malak, a word with the same consonants as the word for king, Melech, means angel in Hebrew. Strong's Hebrew Concordance 4398. Angels refer to foreigners or aliens or angelians, a word coined by Pierre Savak. See the murder of reality, hidden symbolism of the dragon. See also holographic culture, both by Pierre Savak. Molech or Moloch, child devourer. Molech or Molech means a god or fallen angel to whom the children of Israel sacrificed children. Strong's Hebrew Concordance 4432, quote, the God of the Ammonites and the Phoenicians, to whom some Israelites, Israelites sacrificed their infants in the Valley of Hinnom, end of quote. Child sacrifice plays a central and continuing role in the Bible and in the human story. A picture from, of Moloch, I think from Charles Foster, uh, Illustrated Bible. Seed through the fire. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of, of thy God, I am the Lord. Leviticus 18.21, King James Version. Whenever the King James Version puts words in uh, italics, such as the fire and am, it means that the authors of the King James Version added those words. In the Hebrew, it uh, does not have the word fire. In fact, one could read this verse without having any connotations of sacrifice. Uh, it could just mean allowing your children to go to serve Moloch. 
Some modern translations use the word children rather than seed. The Hebrew word uses, used in this word, verse, zera, means seed, sowing, offspring. Strong's Hebrew 2233. Literally, zara refers to the action of sowing seeds in the field. End of quote. Hall Word Book of the Old Testament 582a. Angels and dragons or serpents. In the biblical and classical tradition, the reptile is generally associated with the seraphim angel in opposition to the fallen angels and their leader Satan. Holographic Culture, page 7 by Pierre Sabach. Classical has an asterisk next to it put there by Pierre Sabach uh, because he wants people to understand that the word classical comes from the Latin classis, which means a naval fleet. So like classical music would mean naval fleet music. Classical literature would mean naval uh, literature and because the Navy uh, and, and sailing plays a huge part in human history. The word seraphim refers to fiery angels from the Hebrew word seraph to burn. Strong's Hebrew, Hebrew 83.13, seraph to burn, 83.14, seraph, fiery serpent. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, or Tzabaoth. In Hebrew, Tzaba or Saba means army, host, host of angels. Strong's Hebrew, 6635. In Hebrew, Tzab means a lizard. Strong's Hebrew, uh, 6632. An army of lizards. Yahweh, the Lord of lizards, or snakes. Interestingly, uh, Strong uh, refers to Tsaba or Sava as a masculine noun, but in general, Hebrew nouns that end with an ah sound uh, refer to a female gender, and uh, the same with Sabaot, the, the T ending uh, or the Tav ending to a noun generally indicates a feminine noun. And this, this is because the host and the angels really don't have gender. Uh, the Greek myths and the other myths of gods always have gods and angels, or whatever you want to call them, able to switch genders at will. Angels and dragons or serpents. Philologically, the word saboth, denoting the angelic hosts, uh, relates to a, to a crew of a naval vessel is identified in Hebrew with Tzof, a watcher, a metonym for a dragon, detailed in chapter 5, Angels, Dragons, and Gods. In the biblical and classical tradition, the reptile is generally associated with the seraphim angel in opposition to the fallen angels and their leader, Satan. Holographic Culture, page 7, by Pierre Sabak. That should be an entire quote there. I left out the quote mark at the beginning. Amram, the father of Moses and the viper angel. Quote, I looked upon the watchers, eating. I raised my eyes and saw one of them. His looks were frightening like those of a viper, and his garments were multicolored, and he was extremely dark. And afterwards I looked, and behold, by his appearance and his face was like that of an adder. This watcher said to me, All his paths are darkness, and all his work is darkness, and he is in darkness, you see. And he rules over all the darkness, Shadim. And I rule over all of the light, Seraphim. The complete Dead Street Scrolls in English, the Testament of Amran, fragment one and two, and quoted in uh, Holographic Culture, page seven, by Pierre Savak. Shade, demon, shade. The Hebrew word shade, spelled, pronounced shade rather than shed, as it's written in the transliteration. Shedim, plural, means a malignant demon or devil. Strong's Hebrew 7700. In English, the word shade also can refer to a demon. Milka and dragons are serpents. Milka descends from a famous dragon slayer from Greek mythology, Cadmos or Cadmus. Before connecting Milka and her family to Greek and Egyptian mythology and history, this video will discuss Milka in Genesis and the great scandal that no one will talk about. Quote, and Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. 
and Haran died before his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees, or Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Now, the word Haran died before his father can have a double meaning, both in Hebrew and English. It could mean he died temporally before his father, or it could also mean he died before his father's eyes. The text does not make this clear. Abraham and loyalty. Milcah the queen married her uncle Nahor, the brother of her father Haran. Queens become queens when they marry kings. This means Abram and his brothers Haran and Nahor come from a royal family. This means their father Terah comes from royalty. We will see the, that the, the word royalty derives from words for dragon or serpent. You'll also notice that Milka doesn't really have a real name here. She just has a name, Queen. That applies to most of the famous people in our history, kings and queens. We get mostly fake names. We get titles rather than names. Incest or endogamy. Milka married her uncle Nahor, the brother of Abram and the brother of her father Haran. Today, most Western cultures view an uncle marrying a niece as incest. Incest or endogamy, marrying within one's group or family, plays a large role in the Bible and in the marriages of Egyptian pharaohs. Incest or endogamy. Merriam-Webster defines endogamy to mean marriage within a specific, specific group as required by custom or law. Abraham twice refers to his wife Sarah as his sister. Genesis 12, 10-20 and Genesis 21-16. Isaac refers to his wife Rebecca as his sister, Genesis 26, 1 to 33. Even today, royal families marry in their tiny group. Biblical laws on incest. Milcah married Nahor, the brother of her father Haran. Leviticus 18, 14 forbids sexual relations with an uncle or father's brother. Quote, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt." End of quote. Although today scholars call the Torah or Pentateuch the five books of Moses, nothing in the Torah indicates Moses knew Abraham or could write about him. Sister and niece marriage. Pharaohs of Egypt often married their sister and niece, the daughter of their brother or sister. In Genesis 20:12, Abraham tells Abimelech, the king of Herar, Quote, and indeed, yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. End of quote. Abraham's brother Nahor married his niece, niece Milcah the queen. Like a pharaoh, Nahor married, married the daughter of his brother Haran. Endogamy played a large role in Abraham's family as well as with pharaohs. Milcah, sister of Lot. And Haran begat Lot. Genesis 11:27, And Abraham and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Genesis 11:29, Haran begat Lot, Milcah, and Iscah. We'll eventually come back to Iscah, but not in this video. The Lot River, Queen Milcah's brother, Lot's River in France. Again, the Lot River, Pont Valentre, on the river of Queen Milka's brother Lot. The Chateau de Bonaguil, Lot, Lot, Lot de Heran, named after Queen Milka's brother Lot and father Haran. Lot and Lot and Haran departments in France. And you can see them here, the Lot Department and the Lot et Heron Department in southwestern France. Named after the brother and father of Queen Milka, Lot and Heron. Children of Nahor and Milka. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milka, she is, hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Genesis 22:20. 20. 
Huts his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemuel the father of Aran, Genesis 22-21. Milcah bore these children with Nahor, her husband and uncle. Uts, a Germanic name. Everett Fox transliterates Huts as Uts, a common surname today of Germanic origin. Shock and Bible, Genesis 22-21. The Uts family has several coats of arms. The Uts original potato chips. Buzz. Betuel, son of Nahor and Milka, and Hesed, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Hidlap, and Betuel, Genesis 22.22. Importantly for the videos on Milka and for biblical scholars, Milka and Nahor had a boy child named Betel, Betuel, who also scholars don't talk about much. Betuel and Bezier. Notice the similarity between Betuel's name and the name Betel or Bezier. An earlier video showed the simple linguistic changes required to change the biblical, the biblical Betel into Bezier. The TH becomes a Z, just as Castilian uh, Spanish speaking say the Z is a TH and French people say the TH is a Z and the L becomes an R. Abraham's family like, like to name places after their members. Betuel fathers Rebekah with Milka, and Betuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milk, Milka did bear to a Nahor, Abraham's brother, Genesis twenty-two twenty-three. 23. Betuel, the son of Milka and Nahor, begat Rebekah with his mother Milka. Rebekah, the wife of Isaac and the mother of Jacob and Esau, born of incest, a fact assiduously avoided or explicitly denied by biblical scholars. Rebecca, born of incest, Sunday schools and yeshivas assiduously avoid the plain language of Genesis that Betuel begat Rebecca. These eight Milka did bear to a Nahor, Abraham's brother. This tale of Milka's incest with her son Betuel appears right after the story of Yahweh's command to Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, Genesis 22, 1 to 19. The story of the binding of Isaac, or Akedah, overshadows the story of Milka's incest with Betuel. Scholars have ignored Milka. The Jewish Encyclopedia says about Milka, one, daughter of Haran and wife of her uncle, Nahor, she bore eight sons, the youngest of whom was Betuel, father of Rebekah, without mentioning that he fathered Rebekah with his mother, Milka. The Ministry of Truth version, or Wikipedia, known by some, quote, Milka's son Betuel moves to Padam Aram, also called, called Aram Nahariim, and fathers Rebekah. Milka's granddaughter, Rebekah, eventually marries Milka's nephew, Isaac, and gave birth to Jacob, who became Israel. End of quote. So the Ministry of Truth changes Rebekah into Milka's granddaughter from her daughter, as the actual Genesis story says. Nothing in the text of Genesis 22 supports the Ministry of Truth's claim that Milka's son, Betuel, moves to Padam Aram and fathers Rebekah. Quote, and it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milka, she has also borne children unto thy brother Nahor, and Betuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milka did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother, Genesis 22:23. Clearest day. The Encyclopedia Judaica also ignores Milka. The 16 volume 1971 Encyclopedia Judaica has no entry for Milka. It lists Milbauer Joseph followed by Miletus, leaving out Milka in between. Volume 11, page 1547. And here's a photocopy of the page. And you can see it's uh, uh, Milbauer and Miletus on the left column. The Encyclopedia Judaica ignores Milka with a K. The 1971 Encyclopedia Judaic has no entry for Milka, the alternate spelling. It lists the words milk, followed by the word milkweed, leaving out Milka in between. 
volume 11, page 1578. And here we have a photocopy showing milk at the top left and milkweed right after it. Milka and, and Greek and Egyptian history. The incest of Betuel and Queen Milka connects Genesis to the famous tale of Oedipus and his mother wife, Queen Jocasta, or Yocasta. The incest of Betuel and Milka connects Genesis to the identical Egyptian tale of Pharaoh Amenhotep IV, or Akhenaten, the videos will use this spelling, it varies, there are a number of different ways to spell it, Akhenaten, and his mother wife, Queen T. Now I pronounce this Queen T, some people say Thai, but I think T should be the correct spelling, and also gives a certain different types of importance to this this queen that uh, Jungle Surfer YouTube channel and the Christos Mandilor uh, YouTube channel, I think he now goes by Krishnan Resurrection, have made many videos on the importance of tea. Milka and Jocasta of Oedipus. This series of videos on Milka will identify Queen Milka and Queen Jocasta of the Oedipus tale. We will see that Queen Jocasta and Milka have identical family trees leading back to the Dragon Slayer. We'll see that one, one of the names of Milka's ancestors in Genesis 11 means dragon. Milka and T, wife of Akhenaten. The series of videos on Milka will discuss the identity of Queen Milka and Queen T, mother and wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Part of this deception involves telling identical stories in different languages and creating a history where the identical stories occurred thousands of years apart. Historians have made careers te of telling these different stories as being completely different with identical facts and saying, well, history just repeats itself over and over. Cadmus and the Dragon. The next video will discuss the Greek myth of Cadmus and the Dragon. This myth, myth sets the foundation for the creation of Thebes and the Oedipus Rex story. It also sets the foundation for the story of the god Dionysus and his guardian, the god Hermes or Mercury. Dionysus and Hermes form the basis of modern Freemasonry and much more. The Serpent or Dragon The serpent plays a central role in the Torah. We will see that the serpent worship permeated the Americas before Columbus with serpent shrines and monuments all over the country. The video will connect Cadmus to the genealogy from Genesis 11 and just suggest a meaning for the name of one ancestor different from the meaning, traditional meaning. One of the ancestors' name means dragon. Dionysus and Hermes or Mercury. A video on the tale of Dionysus and his guardian Hermes or Mercury will follow the video on Cadmus. Dionysus, the god of wine, fertility, theater, and ritual madness, permeates modern society without the knowledge of most. Hermes, the god of commerce, thieves, and crossroads, plays a central role in modern society. Dionysus, Baphomet, Freemasons, and Kings. Dionysus had a close relationship to Hermes, or Mercury, a central figure in Freemasonry in France. The Rossignol, or rooster, of France symbolizes Mercury. This video will connect Dionysus to Baphomet, the god of the Freemasons. Oedipus and Akhenaten. After the videos on Cadmus and Dionysus, a video will discuss the myths of history or history of Oedipus the king and Pharaoh Akhenaten. The video will rely to a large extent on Emmanuel Velikovsky's book, Oedipus and Akhenaten. Those viewers who know of Velikovsky probably know him better for his Worlds in Collision, a book that makes much more sense from a flat earth perspective than from a moving planets and sun perspective. A short video on Milka will suggest an alternate meaning for the name Milka and will connect her to Hathor, Hathor, an Egyptian goddess. This connection brings the tale back to the sons of Het and the Jesuits. Possible future videos on Milka. Milka connects the Torah to other myths or histories, such as the Man Mabinogion and the children of Lear or Lyre. In the interest of moving on, finishing the Genesis story and starting the Exodus story, a video on Milka and the Mabinogion may never get made or may have to wait a few years. Thank you for watching.
permission to copy and translate. The author permits any human being to copy and rebroadcast this video in whole or in part. The author permits any human being to translate this video into any language.